In the middle of the night in Beijing City, an enigmatic and almighty deity appears to look for Enlin who lives in the building across the street. Enlin is a young orphan who dreams of being a cultivator, which in this world is the equivalent of being a sorcerer, so he literally begins his 18th birthday by explaining to his late mother's painting that he has decided to join a local cult. At that moment, a stranger appears at Enlin's door and everything starts to get turbulent, so Enlin takes a magic seal to protect himself and rushes to call the Department of Spiritual Affairs. However, the stranger was none other than the deity from the beginning, who greets him Lin in a friendly manner and explains that they have been awaiting him for a long time. Then the deity quickly brings him to the heavens right on the boundary between the earthly and the spiritual plane. He requests that Lin accepts the system he wishes to bestow upon him and promises to send him for training in the spiritual world. Following this, the enigmatic individual begins accumulating a substantial amount of energy while reciting the words, Activate the deity of War God's system. He transfers all of this stored energy to an Lin who seamlessly integrates with the system due to compatibility. Subsequently, he hands over a scroll. It's a letter of recommendation which will allow an Lin to study at the prestigious Magical Academy of the Nine Districts in the spiritual realm. An Lin accepts it immediately, as he has no concerns in the mortal world and anyhow, intends to cultivate himself. He believes it's better to do so in the spiritual realm. After this, he bids farewell to his benefactor and stays engaged in a conversation with his system, which assumes the form of a sphere with wings and introduces itself as the spirit of the system. The spirit is responsible for guiding newcomers and is only visible to the host, meaning and Lin himself. He advises and Lin to exercise caution in using it to avoid drawing the attention of others. There, he detects a human cultivator trapped within the spatial teleportation channel. And Lin decides to assist and the system instructs him to absorb the excess energy from the rift, when he does, a girl emerges and falls onto him. Upon realizing that Enlin has rescued her from this predicament, she helps him to his feet. The system, noticing its host's interaction with someone of the opposite gender, activates a set of skins to enhance his appearance, modifying his attire to a more elegant one. She introduces herself as Su Xiao Lan of the Vermilion Bird Sect, and he, after introducing himself, explains that he hails from the Han Xu realm, but is not affiliated with any sect. Shadowland directs him to the Magical Academy of the Nine Districts, founded by the Celestial Alliance, and it serves as the primary sacred land for cultivation in the spiritual world. The entire academy is a floating continent in the sky. After this, everyone goes to the center of the place so that a magical monolith designates the students in each class, something like the magical hat of Hogwarts. And Lin is impressed to see how human wizards of the highest level are placed in lower classes, so Xiao explains that the wizards of the spiritual world have set the bar too high, at that moment, all the students are left with their mouths agape as they see that Swan, who leads the Thousand Spirit sect, is placed in the elite class because he possesses a recommendation signed by a god. Xiao tells Enlin that he should not feel less than anyone else, as he is surely more powerful than he imagines himself. She also says over 10,000 new disciples will be divided into 100 classes based on their cultivation foundation, though she is certain that the two of them will be in the same class. And Lin thanks the Waifu for everything and seizes the moment to find out her level, but she is called at that moment to be appointed by the monolith. At that moment, and Lin discovers that Xiao is super popular and admired by everyone. In fact, Xiao is placed in the upper ninth stage, elite class one. After this, and Lin is called to be appointed by the monolith, and everyone starts to wonder who he is as Xiao seems very interested in him. In addition, the hype rises to a thousand percent as and Lin is found to possess a recommendation from Master Lu. As if that wasn't enough, one of the most prestigious teachers uses his powers to read in Lin's future and gives him a great prophecy. However, when it comes to being designated by the monolith, and Lin gets the worst grade in the history of the academy and not only becomes a laughingstock, but earns the hatred of several students who have failed to be assigned to the elite class despite being much stronger than him. In fact, it is Xuan himself who is outraged by this and invites in Lin to a duel, but Xiao helps in Lin flee and promises to protect him. Once alone during the night, and Lin talks to the system and asks for help to stop being hated by everyone, but the system tells him that he can become much stronger than any other sorcerer if he fulfills the quests it will randomly assign him. And Lin carries out the first mission to increase his body level, which consists of doing 10 push-ups. When he completes them, he automatically levels up, so he gets excited and continues doing the missions to the point that to move to the next body level, he must do 10 billion push-ups, so he decides to quit. After this, and Lin decides to take an evening stroll to gather his thoughts, but is intercepted by a ninja. Fortunately, and Lin is now at a higher level than he was currently at, so he is able to successfully defend himself on more than one occasion. 
to the point of beating the ninja and discovering that he is none other than the lout who spent the entire ceremony bullying Enlin for being assigned to the elite class. However, the system detects that Enlin is about to be attacked by a spell that he is not able to repel yet, so it orders him to flee the place or use a joker called Heavenly Gate, which can resist the attack in exchange for a large amount of physical energy. Fortunately, Xiao appears on the scene and helps Enlin in the fight. Anyway, the fight stops when they discover that the ninja was not the aforementioned person, but a clone. Later, Xiao confesses to Enlin that she enrolled in the academy to be able to protect the weak, giving a super kawaii moment between the two. In fact, the system increases the bond between the two by 80%. The next day, Enlin and Xiao head to class, but the waifu notices that Enlin hasn't slept well. A flashback reveals that the school instructor congratulated Enlin for earning the hatred of the entire sect, as it is an accomplishment that few have achieved. Xiao even mentions that it brings good luck with it. Later, the youngsters arrive at the class of Professor Kang King, who despite being literally a tree is one of the most respected sorcerers in the entire community. After this, a waifu Su Hyun Young arrives in the class and drives all the men in the class crazy because of her prestige and beauty, even in Lin, which makes Xiao a little jealous. When the class officially begins, and Lin's expectations are sky high, but he quickly realizes that classes are very different at the Magic Academy as everyone learns through meditation and not the conventional way. As if that class wasn't confusing enough for Lin, the following lessons are literally taught by a sword, a flame, and a hammer. Fortunately for him, the instructor who complimented him the night before, Yu Ling, is in charge of teaching the next class about the human world, since she belongs to the mortal world. And Lin is appointed as the main assistant, but the waifu does nothing but gives cell phones to all the students and gives them permission to do whatever they want during the whole class. The last teacher is the numerologist who saw in Lin's future, and although he started out generating great enthusiasm in Lin, due to his traditional teaching methods, the young man is disappointed to see that he forces them to take a nap to learn how to handle the world of dreams and understand the subconscious. In between dreams, and Lin hears his teacher warn him to beware of the bloodbath he will see when he wakes up. This seems to be confirmed later as Enlin is awakened just in time by Xiao as Yu Ling is about to start a training session to practice using the five elements. The chosen ones for the fight are Xuan and Enlin, but Xiao steps in and asks to impersonate her crush to protect him. The waifu lunges at full speed against Xuan as she wants to completely prevent him from noticing Enlin who watches in amazement the impressive fight between the two. The waifu attacks fiercely using fire techniques but Xuan conjures up a kind of impenetrable water barrier. The system indicates to Enlin the weak point of Xuan's barrier, so Xuan dares to enter combat just in time to save Xiao. Upon seeing Enlin, Xuan literally launches a super-powered attack at him, but he manages to resist using the Heavenly Gate spell. This sends the hype of all the students through the roof, even surprising Xuan, who decides to use a tremendous attack to end the fight. However, he did not notice that Enlin is also a military enthusiast and was able to attack the weak point of his barrier, causing it to crumble. After this, Xuan congratulates Enlin with much admiration and recognizes him as the winner of the fight, as the training was to use the five elements to show his strengths and weaknesses. Everyone is dumbfounded to see Enlin level up in the middle of the fight, even Enlin himself is surprised to see this, but his astonishment falls short when he sees that he receives the mission to absorb spirit stones. As the class ends, Xuan approaches Enlin in a friendly manner and offers to help in any way he can. And Lin has no better idea than to ask him for the spirit stones he needs to complete his mission, not knowing that spirit stones are nothing more or less than the type of currency of the spirit world. And Lin is embarrassed, but Xuan gives him a ring worth many, many spirit stones, which generates a great friendship between the two. As if one friend wasn't enough, and Lin also becomes friends with Su, the waifu from the beginning, as she approaches him to learn more about humans. During the night, and Lin carries out the mission given by the system and after absorbing the spirit stones, manages to level up. And Lin is excited to see her new abilities, but her joy crumbles when she sees the mission she must complete to reach the next level. The operating system explains that every year there is a sort of all-against-all championship, which means and Lin must survive a pitched battle between more than 50,000 students. As if this were not enough, the mission is to be among the top 50 in the ranking even though and Lin is ranked 29,653. If he fails to achieve this, and Lin will be turned into a fairy for a whole year, so he spends the next few days trying to figure out if his friends would still love him if he were to become a fairy overnight, as he doesn't think he is capable of completing the mission. However, having become the center of his friend's ridicule, and Lin decides to tackle the mission. To increase his chances, and Lin knows he must level up, so the system assigns him a new mission, which is to defeat someone of ninth stage or higher. 
And Lin remembers that Xiao was in ninth stage, so he comes up with a brilliant idea of asking the waifu to let him beat her in a fight, since he will unlock an S-class ability if he manages to complete this mission, plus he will climb a lot of positions in the ranking. The next day, and Lin tries to ask Xiao to get beaten by him in a fight, but the waifu is so tender and kind to him that Enlin doesn't dare to ask such a thing. In fact, Enlin tries several more times, but at the last minute he changes his mind and asks the waifu for something else instead of asking for what he really needs. This leads Enlin to talk to Xuan as she needs advice. However, it is Xuan who offers to lose to him in a match, which moves Enlin to the point of refusing the proposal, as he cannot take advantage of his friend like this. Besides, he is too trusting of Xiao. As if it were a romantic scene, and Lin takes advantage of the sunset to talk to Xiao and embarrassingly ask him to agree to lose in a match. The waifu interprets and Lin's words as a confession of love, so she accepts without hesitation. After this, and Lin approaches her to attack, but the waifu blushes and keeps her distance, as she still believes that and Lin wants to kiss her. Xiao hands a bag with special items to and Lin, and Lin seizes the moment to attack her once and for all. Xiao realizes that Enlin had been literal with what she had said earlier and starts crying, which causes Enlin to be unable to go through with her plan. In fact, it all ends in an even bigger misunderstanding and Xiao leaves the scene crying inconsolably, making us all angry at Enlin for provoking tears from the most kawaii waifu ever. At night, Enlin sees all the information Xiao collected and cries disconsolately, as she herself planned dozens of routes to make things easier for her during a camp. However, Although Enlin's intention is to apologize to her waifu, a strong stomach upset prevents her from doing so. Xiao stays up all night thinking about Enlin, but he has not been able to leave the bath all night. In fact, Enlin is not even able to attend classes, so Xuan goes to look for him to help him heal his upset stomach through an ancestral ritual. Finally, Enlin arrives at the annual camp despite the discomfort he suffered earlier. A huge dog named Dibai approaches him and helps him with his intestinal problems. He also tells him that his sense of smell is able to distinguish him from the crowd as he has great potential. After this, Grand Elder Yu announces the rules of the event, places a magic shield on each of the participants and gives final start to the annual academy camp. All the students are teleported to the Thousand Peaks Forest and as soon as they arrive, they begin to form alliances or attack each other. And Lin literally spends the first few hours of the tournament hiding as he still has five minutes left to finish emptying his pipe. However, he is discovered and the students from the different classes pile up to get revenge on him, as not only has he earned everyone's hatred for entering the elite class on recommendation, but he is Xiao's crush and his close friends with Xuan and Su, literally the most popular people in the school. Fortunately, Enlin finishes his detox just in time and advances in level, so he unlocks the god level attack the system had promised him. Although this is incredible, Enlin still has many positions to climb if he wants to enter the top 50, so he knows he must carry out the next mission to level up, a mission that involves defeating 10 ninth stage students. While Enlin was checking the mission, Debao appears and asks him for help with a matter, so the two of them go through a portal to meet with some weak students who were recruited by Debao. The students welcome Enlin as if he were a savior, so Debao explains to him that they are all willing to be defeated by Enlin, since he is the only one who treats them kindly and does not look down on them. Moreover, they know that Enlin will not be cruel to them and will eliminate them without making them feel pain. In this way, Enlin literally moves up many, many places in the ranking as he eliminated 100 students. However, Enlin doesn't have much time to celebrate as one of the top students appears on the scene to attack. Surprisingly, a very powerful waifu named Liu defeats the young man with a single blow, which catches Enlin's attention. A flashback reveals that this waifu was studied in depth by Xiao, as she is extremely powerful and dangerous. However, she kindly introduces herself to Enlin. Although Enlin thinks this is good news, he is alarmed seconds later to realize that the waifu is crazy. She proposes a game to Enlin that involves answering human culture questions, and if he is unable to answer 100 questions in 10 minutes, she will finish him off. Fortunately, Enlin immediately understands the waifu's type of humor, and the waifu asks him only 20 questions. However, some questions are of a personal nature, so Enlin has to make a top list of the most attractive waifus. Even, Enlin is forced to explain what happened between Xiao and him. The last of the 20 questions is quite profound as Liu makes Enlin reflect on his aspirations and desires for the future. Liu congratulates Enlin on passing the challenge, but Enlin is too preoccupied with moving on to the next level, so she takes advantage of her new friend's level to travel together with her to the top of the Black Rock. Meanwhile, Xiao uses her tracker to see how Enlin is doing in the test. Although he is surprised to see that he is at the top of the Black Rock, 
Debai appears to tell him that they must hurry to find an Lin as everyone is looking for him to take advantage of his moment of weakness. At that moment, the Weifu understands why an Lin was absent for the past few days. An Lin literally suffered from chronic diarrhea. However, she doesn't even have time to laugh as she is attacked by one of an Lin's pursuers. Meanwhile, and Lin successfully reaches the top of the Black Rock thanks to Liu's help. The system tells him that he will be able to obtain one of the highest levels of spellcasting if he manages to absorb the power of the Earth in an interrupted manner for a day. But things get strange just a moment later as a boy named Chen Chen welcomes and Lin and tells him that he has waited for him for a long time. But although Liu was able to see and hear him at first, he seems to forget everything that happened in the last minute. On the other hand, Xiao fights fiercely to protect and Lin, but he knows that he cannot win without collaborating with Di Bai, so the two of them rush to form an alliance to flee the place. Meanwhile, and Lin and Liu literally spend the entire night playing lull on top of the Black Rock. This causes two things, firstly, the two become very close and form a super close friendship as between games they share many, many intimacies. Secondly, and Lin's absorption process is greatly accelerated due to the good mood he possesses, so the system recommends him to rush to attack the Waifu as soon as the improvement is completed. Obviously, and Lin is extremely hesitant about this, as the Waifu literally opens her heart wide with him, acknowledging that he is the only friend she has. In fact, she confesses that everyone treats her as a mere tool of war because of her incredible powers. And Lin comes completely clean with her. As the waifu is able to sense lies and has sensed a strange aura about Enlin ever since they arrived at the place. Although Enlin completes the absorption process and increases her level, she does not want to attack Liu and apologizes to him for lying to her earlier. However, Enlin's system causes him to intuitively attack, which further infuriates the waifu and sparks the battle. However, Enlin confesses that he did not attack her willingly and the waifu has no choice but to believe him, as she literally has the power to distinguish truths and lies. Liu demands and Lin to tell him how she has been able to increase her power so radically if they have done nothing but play video games. So and Lin has no choice but to tell him about the War God system that was bestowed upon her. Obviously, the Waifu is able to notice the truth in Lin's words, so she gets annoyed with him for hiding that for so long. Liu asks and Lin to at least come up with a more believable excuse, so he hands her the essences he had eaten to complete one of the missions. This rubs the Waifu the wrong way and gives her a stomachache. So the system teaches and Lin a new healing spell, and he occupies it to help Liu. By way of thanks, the Waifu gives him a tire capable of keeping and Lin safe from the most powerful sorcerers. The two bid each other an emotional farewell, and Lin continues on her course to enter the 50th ranking. However, and Lin finds himself in danger just a few moments later, as Wang Zhuanzhan, the most powerful student in the entire academy, is threatening to destroy all the students unless Chen Chen, the young man who appeared on the mountain, shows up to fight once and for all. This terrifies all the students, but and Lin even pays attention to it as her radar warns her that Xiao is in danger. In fact, the Waifu is literally getting entangled in a conflict with several sorcerers just to save Debai, who was captured by them. However, the Waifu is outnumbered and subdued. Fortunately, and Lin arrives at that precise moment and pulls her and Debai to safety. In fact, Wang's withering attack falls just a second later, but and Lin manages to repel it to save her friends. The attack eliminates almost all the participants just as Wang had announced. The system explains to Enlin that there are only 132 participants left, so Enlin is getting closer and closer to entering the top 50. Seeing what Wei Ji and his henchmen did to Debai, Enlin beats them up and eliminates them from the event. However, Wang gets impatient again and threatens to send another flurry of attacks. Fortunately, Su and Suan manage to stop him momentarily, but Suan rushes to conjure a magic seal to defeat him. However, he needs the cooperation of all the students to gather enough strength, so Wang begins to grow impatient and fights back. Su literally lets herself be defeated, as Wang tries to conquer her again and again, which makes the Waifu fed up. After this, Wang throws another flurry of attacks and eliminates Yuan. Seeing this, and Lin prepares to repel Wang's attack, but Chen Chen appears at that moment and deflects the attack smoothly, leaving and Lin speechless. However, at the end of this action, Chen Chen mystically disappears from the place, the system explains to Enlin that there is no one left but them in the whole forest, so their chances of climbing to the top 50 students is almost impossible, since the last way to score points is to eliminate other participants. The only alternative left for Enlin is to defeat Wang in a 1v1 match as he is literally the top one in the ranking. To protect Xiao from the match that is about to be fought, Enlin eliminates her from the competition. Enlin does the same to Debad, who was literally already in attack position to defend him. Seeing in Lin's self-confidence, Wang simply proceeds to throw a hellish attack at him that could literally wipe out the entire forest. 
However, the system alerts and Lin that he has unlocked the Heavenly Finger, the same technique he saw Chen Chen use minutes before. Thanks to this, and Lin defeats Wang in one move and sends everyone's hype through the roof. And Lin is the winner of the tournament, earning the admiration of everyone, and although he has to spend several days in bed to recover, he realizes it was worth it, as he has gained a lot of improvements and benefits. Days later, the headmaster of the academy reveals that the Demon King has escaped and is wandering in the human realm, so they will send some of the most powerful and prestigious students as messengers. Originally, Wei Ji was to be one of the messengers sent, but he was replaced at the last minute by An Lin, which emotionally crumbled the young man. In fact, he is only left to watch An Lin, Xiao, and Xuan receive all the admiration and recognition from the students. An Lin is even chosen by the Grand Elder to lead the team, so the young idol of the academy has to give a speech. However, An Lin takes advantage of the moment of the speech to tell his classmates that he has opened an order list for all those who want to buy human items, which generates even more admiration among the crowd. As if that wasn't enough, and Lin and Liu announce a call to open an esports club to represent the academy. As expected, and Lin's proposals are a hit with the students, so and Lin and her friends must spend the entire day dealing with requests from the entire school. Wei Ji watches everything that happens with envy, but a flashback reveals that the person who revealed to Wei that he would not go to the human world was Wang. Plus, he predicted the dangers the messengers would face. Although Wei felt concerned for and Lin, Wang assured him that and Lin is predestined for great things. This makes Wei cry bitterly, which is why An Lin literally unlocks an achievement, as the system has detected that an enemy of An Lin is crying with envy. In fact, An Lin's ventures have grown so much that Liu congratulates him for having made an excellent marketing campaign, an action that unleashes Xiao's jealousy. As if this were not enough, Liu gives An Lin a gift. After this, the team prepares to begin their journey, so Dei Bai, Su, and Liu head to the portal to bid their friends an emotional farewell. Although there is a joyful atmosphere in the place, Xiao is not happy at all, as a flashback reveals a conversation she had with one of the teachers, who literally predicted that the road would be tragic and inevitable for Enlin. In fact, the prophecy is fulfilled almost immediately after opening the portal as a strange energy sucks Enlin in violently. Xiao clings to her crush, while Xuan rushes through the portal at full speed to catch up with them. Fortunately for Xiao and Enlin, the system wakes them up quickly, so Enlin has time to activate one of her spells before hitting the ground at an absurd speed. However, and Lin almost runs over a lotus flower that had just spiritually transcended. Suan arrives a moment later and helps his friends recover. Obviously, the lotus flower approaches the group to demand an apology from them, as and Lin absorb its magic. Unfortunately, there is no time to hear their complaints as Ling, a waifu belonging to the Sorcerer Research Center, suddenly appears and starts interrogating them. The group is taken to the Research Center's facility in a super modern and extravagant ship. And Lin wonders about everything that has happened in the past few hours, as there have been too many events together to process in so few hours. However, Ling disrespectfully interrupts the Divine Messengers and mocks them, as she can't believe that the spirit world would send Muta first-year students. Obviously, Shan is upset to hear this and rebukes the Waifu immediately, generating a tense and hostile atmosphere that makes An Lin nervous, as he knows he will have to take care of everything. Fortunately, Xuan proves to be a genius in diplomatic matters and thanks to his manly charm, manages to appease Ling's anger. After this, the Waifu takes them to the headquarters of the barracks, where they meet Yuan, the commander-in-chief. Upon seeing her, and Lin blushes and behaves like a simp, as Yuan is super famous in the human world and all humans are in love with her. Reluctantly, Yuan introduces the eight strongest sorcerers in the headquarters. One of them quickly browbeats and Lin and his friends, thanking them for nothing, as the humans took care of the threats that had been tormenting the human world by their own means. In fact, the man opens a portal to send the youngsters back to the spirit world, as he considers it disrespectful for the authorities to send a couple of freshmen to solve the conflicts of the human world. Yuan politely asks and Lin to leave and that the spirit world will no longer send messengers to the human world. The group begins to leave the place, but an emergency alarm sounds at that very moment and puts the entire barracks on alert. The alarm announces that the demonic cults and the demonic clan have joined forces to invade the humans, so and Lin and his friends decide to stay and fight. However, they are not welcomed by Tian, who literally tries to push the youngsters into the portal. Seeing this, Xuan challenges Tan to a duel to show him that spirit messengers are up to any fight. The system advises and Lin to be the one to fight Tian, as it believes he can easily defeat him. And Lin follows the OA's advice and decides to fight, but Ling surprisingly attacks him, revealing that she is Tian's daughter. Ling violently lashes out at Lin and leaves everyone open mouthed but Enlin almost immediately proves that he is on a different level. Enlin prepares a melee attack on Tian, who literally begins to cry as she feels Enlin stirring up her memories. 
Yoon stops in Lin and congratulates him for impressing everyone, but gives him one last test to evaluate him. The test is to withstand one of her signature spell, the waifu's signature spell. Ling seizes the moment to attack in Lin, but she was unaware of the danger she was exposing herself to and Lin has to save her, proving that not only is she capable of withstanding an attack from Yuan, but she can save others from its effects. This causes and Lin and her friends to be welcomed by Yuan, so they can officially fight alongside the humans. Ling and Lin arrive at one of the battlefronts and prepare to fight the bloody gods. And Lin follows each of the waifu's recommendations to prevent the deadly attacks of their enemies, but also receives advice from the system to be effective in their attacks. Seeing all this, Shan begins to worry greatly and asks for permission to join that battlefield as he can't stop thinking about the premonition his teacher gave him about and Lin. Meanwhile, the bloody gods advance across the battlefield in an intimidating manner, so Ling decides that the best idea is to flee. However, Lin insists that they must stay and fight, as he has seen a weakness in the bloody gods and their mist. In fact, Lin quickly infiltrates the enemies, and before Lin could decide to go in, Ling struck his first blow. And Lin requests reinforcements from HQ and reveals that he has used one of his battle attacks to buy some time. And Lin explains to Ling everything he did in that short span of time, so a flashback reveals the young messenger's every move. Meanwhile, at the headquarters, Xi'an and Xuan beg Tian to let them fight on the same battlefield as in Lin, but Tian tells them that their type of magic will be of no help against the bloody gods. One of the sorcerers chosen by Tian to accompany and Lin attacks Xi'an to show her that she will be of no use, but Xuan helps her in combat and promises Tian that he will deliver her head if the mission fails, so Yuan agrees. In addition, the situation becomes even more urgent as the headquarters artificial intelligence notifies Yuan that the Black Feather Clan is rampaging. Yuan immediately orders the troops to fight on the first battlefield. But when one of the sorcerers starts to go through the portal, the Black Feathers use it to invade the barracks. Despite striving to stop the invasion, the wizards are unable to defeat the Black Feather Clan, who are literally after Enlin. Xuan and Xiao join Ling and Enlin, but realize almost immediately that something is wrong at headquarters as Ling's phone has lost communication with the base and all the squads. However, while devising a plan, Enlin is brutally attacked by the bloody gods and the group is threatened. Xuan runs at full speed to take care of the two waifus who initiated the attack, while Xiao and Ling collaborate to save Enlin before she collides with the ground. Unfortunately, it was all part of an ambush and Enlin is once again in the hands of the vampire waifu. Fortunately, Enlin manages to use one of her techniques to repel the enemies, so Xuan, Xiao and Ling have enough time to end the battle. Obviously, the battle does not end here and a squadron of the Black Feathers appears on the scene to kidnap Enlin. Enlin is taken to a kind of gigantic altar, where the sorcerers who were defeated at the headquarters lie. Also, Enlin is locked and unconscious inside a sphere of dark energy, but a fairy begins to call out to him and Enlin regains consciousness. Upon opening his eyes, Enlin realizes that the supposed fairy was his operating system, who reminds him of another of the powers he unlocked when Liu gave him his magic ring. At that moment, Xiao takes advantage of the last halo of energy from the portal and inserts his sword to attack, just in time for Liu to make his stellar appearance, completely destroying the dark energy sphere and moving between the portals with incredible mastery. Liu is able to defeat all the bloody gods and leaves everyone with their mouths agape, leaving the field open to see one of the best battles of the animation. However, the hype immediately diminishes as the demonic waifu proves that she's on another level. In one move, she almost ended Liu's life, but the flower on Lin's head made its appearance just in time to save her. Liu stops teasing and starts attacking, surprising the demonic waifu with her supersonic speed. Unfortunately, this angers the waifu even more, who uses one of the most beautiful and best animated transformations in Anon history. The waifu absorbs the power of the human sorcerers captured in the barracks and breaks the seal of three divine millennia-old objects, which makes everyone in the place's hair stand on end. By means of an unbreakable spell, Enlin is violently subdued by the waifu. In fact, every single member of the squad falls before the awesome power of the demonic waifu, who literally conjures a kind of barrier capable of destroying stars and galaxies. However, after making this move, the waifu's life energy comes to an end, revealing that she literally gave her life to do the will of her god. At that point, Enlin's system gives her the option of forfeiting one-fifth of her life in exchange for unlocking her full power. However, his fairy forbids him to do so. After this, Enlin awakens in a new dimension. The system fairy reveals that this dimension is the sea of energy inside her body. Yi Enlin is inside her subconscious. The curse of the sword begins to sever the connection between Enlin and her fairy, who finally reveals her true nature. Tina and the system fairy confesses that she and Lin have known each other long before, even though he doesn't remember. 
She has broken all the laws of the universe and turned everything upside down, as she has directly influenced the outcome of fate, something extremely dangerous and reprehensible. At this point, and Lin begins to see how Tina planned every single thing that happened, including creating the whole supposed war system thing. Hearing this, and Lin is moved and decides to fight alongside Tina to keep her alive, so the two join forces as they have done so far to literally reveal themselves against the universe and fate. Tina guides and Lin to help him control the three divine weapons that have caused the disaster, which have connection and synergy with each other, as they literally work as slabins to unleash catastrophes. And Lin wields the sword and manages to stop the reign of calamities that was about to be unleashed. However, as promised, Tina leaves in Lin's heart once the catastrophe comes to an end, so and Lin must go to the fairy world if he wants to find her again. While the season could end this way and it would be perfect, the producers decided there was still more to be revealed about the geopolitical history of this universe. Every thousand years, the Celestial Alliance and the Demon Beast Clan fight a battle on Stone Dragon Island to determine who will control that territory for the next thousand years. The Divine Lord of the Bats, representative of the Demonic Clan, appears before Zi Chen, the Emperor of the Heavenly Alliance. Although Bats is extremely threatening, Zi Chen doesn't even take him seriously, which provokes the young demon representative. To remove the mocking smile from Zi Chen's face, Rusia Lagos reveals to him the attack that the Black Feathers clan has carried out on the human world, which puts the Heavenly Emperor on alert as he cannot believe that the demons were able to unite in a truce in order to defeat the Heavenly Alliance and the humans. Finally, the two representatives prepare to begin combat, but a strange magical papyrus stops them. The person behind it is Yu, who was not only banished from the Celestial Alliance, but is the leader's daughter. The Waifu begins to invoke a celestial catastrophe by channeling all the spiritual energy of the place, revealing that she wants to be part of the so-called true gods to give Stone Dragon Island to humans. Zack Chen is surprised to hear this and asks the Waifu what she wants in return, whereupon she explains that she only intends two things, to be accepted back into the Celestial Alliance, and for her mother to be posthumously awarded the highest honor, terms which Zi Chen readily agrees to. However, things don't go well when the Waifu begins the channeling ritual, so Yu has no choice but to literally accept that not everything went as planned as she will lose her life if she continues to try to complete the ritual. Seeing this, Zhu Chen organizes his army to cover the fighting fronts, as well as telling Bats that the fight between the two will be fought in exactly three days. The following scene reveals that Murcielagos follows the orders and advice of a strange being, who planned everything from the shadows. Murcielagos' next goal is to use a demonic magic scepter that is capable of sealing the entire stone dragon island, Plus, it is capable of locating the treasure that humans have been searching for thousands of years. Finally, Bats is ordered to wipe out all the students of the Academy of Magic, while the Celestial Alliance concentrates on protecting the battle fronts. However, although an unprecedented revolution is literally taking place in the spirit world, and Lin seems to completely ignore the chaotic situation and spends the day contemplating all that he has achieved in recent times. This causes the young hero to value his companions and wish to give them some meaningful present for them. Anyway, when Lin tries to give something to Liu, she tells him to take the magic item to Xiao, who deserves it more than she does. Following the above logic, the most beautiful waifu in the anime also thanks Lin's intentions, but tells her that Xuan will appreciate such a gift even more. Lin goes to Xuan's room, but Xuan rejects the gift, as expected, since it is literally a female outfit. After this last rejection, Lin considers using said outfit, so he tries to see how it would look on him if he did, but is discovered by Di Bai and the flower that lives on his head, so he changes his mind and decides to try one last move. And Lin goes to Xiao's room to say thank you for the waifu's unconditional friendship, using a super emotional speech as a front to get the waifu to accept the gift, as she doesn't want to throw away such a valuable object. The waifu accepts the gift once and for all and decides to use it right then and there. The suit begins to corrupt Xian and Lin despairs but is reassured to see that the waifu has managed to master the magic of the suit to the point that she has become even stronger thanks to it. After this, they are both notified of the trip the students will be taking to Stone Dragon Island, so Xiao uses her new power to quickly travel to the starting point within Lin. Despite doing his best, Xiao fails to make it in time and the ship the students are traveling on gets farther and farther away. And Lin's fans cheer with all their might for their hero, but it's too late for them, as they realize that they won't be able to reach a ship. In fact, they both realize how beautiful it would be to spend time alone in the academy without responsibilities, so they give up the idea of following the ship. However, Wang comes flying in on his staff at that moment and gives a friendly greeting to Enlin, making it clear that he admires him greatly and intends to help him reach the ship. 
Wang imbues his spear with magic and the young men approach the ship at full speed. This upsets the instructor, who wanted to protect Enlin as a flashback reveals another tragic prophecy about Enlin's life. Seeing that the ship is about to cross the spiritual dimension, Suan organizes a plan together with his companions to help increase Xiao and Enlin's speed. The young men make an incredible effort, but it is Enlin who must use his new weapons to make a triumphant entry into the ship just before it crosses the spiritual dimension. After this, the instructor projects a magic hologram to explain the whole background of the conflict. 10,000 years ago, there was a society called the Purple Star, which was the most powerful in the world. When it was destroyed, it left a mysterious artifact on Stone Dragon Island, an artifact that all the clans and sects became obsessed with. This led to war between the Celestial Alliance and the Demonic Clans, a war that persists to this day as revealed a few episodes ago. The students speed through the portal, unaware that the Divine Lord of the Bats is anxiously awaiting them. The instructor appoints four best students in case they have to join the battle. Although it was expected, the ones chosen for the position are Xuan, Su, Xiao, and to everyone's surprise, the fourth leader is not Enlin, but Wei Ji. In fact, Enlin will have to step aside from the group as he is the strongest of all and can not only protect himself, but is capable of stopping any threat. Being pulled away from the group, Enlin begins to assess how he can advance and level, but his attention is automatically diverted as he sees the skies become tinged with a strange, threatening color. The rest of the group also notices this and panic begins to spread as it is clear that only someone extremely powerful could completely seal off a territory as large as Stone Dragon Island. The Divine Emperor Bats uses the magic of the Magic Scepter to reveal all the hidden treasures, a spell that is capable of destroying everything in its path. Fortunately, the instructor manages to lead her students to safety, where they all gather strength to channel a barrier capable of resisting the impact of the dark magic. However, seeing that they are surrounded and about to be defeated, the instructor decides to give her life to protect her students. Obviously, Xuan cannot stand idly by, so he organizes resistance to prevent his teacher's death. Meanwhile, Enlin closes the season in the most epic way in the world, defeating hundreds of enemies and advancing towards the highest mountain in the place. The end. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and click the bell icon to get new anime recaps.